This is Jupiter. It's one of my favorite planets personally because it's just gorgeous to look at. My name is Tracy Drain and I'm a flight systems engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. You can kind of think of the system engineer as the nerve center where the whole project comes together. So a systems engineer needs to know what everyone is doing and how every part of the spacecraft is supposed to work and how it all fits together. They call it the big picture outlook, where there are engineers who need to focus on certain small areas, things can get lost in the cracks. So a systems engineer looks across the broad project and makes sure we don't forget any little things that could crop up and cause us problems later. It's a big job. It's a huge job. Three, two, one, ignition and liftoff of the Atlas V with Juno on a trek to Jupiter, a planetary piece of the puzzle on the beginning of our solar system. The current mission I'm working on is called Juno. This is Juno, and it is the first solar-powered spacecraft to go to Jupiter. Juno is an unmanned deep space mission, which is going to a place where it would be really, really hard to send humans, at least with the technology that we have today. Juno is like a big, giant robot with eight science instruments on it that will be collecting data about the planet and the planet's magnetic field. It's important for us to be able to send robotic, autonomous spacecraft out there to go and gather the information we would need to learn more about the environment there for when we do manage to send people out to those distances. So here we are at the Environmental Test Lab at JPL, and what you're seeing here is a couple of large thermal vacuum chambers that the team can use in order to check out equipment that's going to be going up into space. And you can think of the thermal vacuum chamber like a soda can that you can suck all the air out without it crushing and make the outside really, really cold. And when you put something inside in the vacuum with the cold outside, it's going to be like it's in space. And when we shut this door, we would end up sucking all the air out of this chamber and creating a vacuum to simulate what the, what the instrument would see when it's in space. We can then shine light through this window from the solar simulator. There we go. There it goes. The energy that it produces is so strong, you can actually cook a hot dog right here. You can think of it as a giant flashlight through, which simulates the sun shining on something in space. And that way, we can simulate as closely as possible the conditions that this instrument is going to see on the spacecraft out in space. We discovered that when the spacecraft was going to be at its closest approach to the sun, that instrument was going to get way warmer than it was supposed to be. It's going to be warm enough that we might worry that the instrument could not be able to do its job at Jupiter as well as it was designed to. Being creative and problem solving is like one of the very top things an assistance engineer has to be comfortable with. There are problems out there that you will never have seen before. They're gonna be really complicated. I like to do all sorts of things in my spare time. I like to read sci-fi and fiction books. And I also like stuff where you can run around and have fun like laser tag. I caught the space bug probably when I was around seven years old, and I loved being outside and looking up at the stars and learning the names of the constellations. From being a kid to finally be at a place that's doing cutting edge exploration of the solar system is kind of incredible. I pinch myself every now and then to think that here I am and this is what I'm doing for my career.